tomatoes and squash and greens. Oh my! But they haven't touched the peppers and that is the main thing. Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California on a hot day. Let's do a tomato update. Yesterday, this beautiful tomato plant, which is growing with a squash plant, and I picked the squash off, had probably over a hundred tomatoes. And last night, in the middle of the night, I could not believe when my camera went off. I've got a little camera here. I'll swing around so you can see it sitting here. Just a simple little wise cam. And we've got another one up there. Try to keep some cameras around just to kind of keep an eye out on what is going on. I get beeped. And I thought, okay, probably a rabbit or a skunk or maybe even a coyote walking through because they do walk through here and then they go down the hill and that's where Gary's garden is. Oh no, in the camera is a deer. The night before I saw some deer roaming down the drive there was a pair, but last night it was a deer. I came running out. It took Gary and I to run out to chase him off. And he just mo and she, she moseyed on down, probably to the neighbor's house. And then before she left, she decimated this tomato plant. What she's doing is she's coming through and she's stripping the leaves. It's hard to tell, but see what they do. They run their mouth through and she found out she likes tomatoes. The first tomato plant I found out she was eating was the one over there. That was my beautiful tomato plant. Oh, I forgot to cover my corn last night because she ate the tops off the other day. She took out the whole center, tomatoes and everything. I wasn't sure what happened. And then I did find it on the camera. It was the deer. They come down, they get water, and then they're coming through. And they've gotten this great liking, the tomatoes. It doesn't look like... They did much to the corn. Now, let me give you a hint if you're dealing with deer. Now, we have mule deer, I believe it is. But the thing is, they won't touch the tool. They mouth differently than a lot of animals. And when they touch this, they don't like the feel of it. So I've been fortunate to know that they won't touch the tool. So they haven't touched the watermelon. And anything I put tool on, they have not touched. That's not saying that... I'm not crazy about tooling the entire yard. I'm going to be very selective. Let her go ahead and do what she wants with that tomato plant. She's kind of come through here. See how they run their mouth through and they pull off some of the leaves. So I started looking at them and thinking hornworms, but there was no droppings. There were no hornworms to find. So she kind of walked through here. Now I'll get back to the watermelon in a minute. But this is so open, perfect height. I mean, look how nice and tall, and it, it's just the perfect height for the deer. So she came through and she really did a number on this. Eating the leaves and poor plants struggling right now. I don't know if it's gonna make a comeback. I'm not going to cover that one. And the reason I'm not gonna cover it is what's precious to me is the watermelon. I have plenty of tomatoes. There's tomato plants growing right now that will grow well into the fall and into the winter. So I have no reason to try to keep her out. If I try to keep her out of her favorite plant, that's not to say I'm not going to shush her and come running out and shush her out. But if I keep her out of that, that's when she'll try to experiment with things. We came out last night and I quickly covered this with tulle. So she would not decide, well, maybe watermelon leaves taste good too. So it worked, and this morning I just kind of dropped it down. I'm so close to having five watermelon on there that I don't want her to decide, well, that's tooled, everything's tooled. Let's see what we can do with this fabric, this tool. Right now, it's working perfectly. I just draped it on, left it down there, and then I clipped it to the top where I've got the irrigation tubing and the tomato steaks is really easy. I'll show you what I'm doing. I've got a lot of my favorite stuff. I am buying these metal clips and they hold really, really well. Let me tell you something. You can wrap the tool around the um, post and then just clip it together to itself and it works great. And then in the morning, you can just release it and take it down. Close pins are good too. See, I've got some, see how they clip really nice to the tote and it's holding the tool. Well, you just kind of flip it over and clip it to itself. Now, 
as I was saying, clothespins are good. They do break down, oh, I would say in about six months because of the sun. Some of them have lasted over a year, but the metal will not break down. Plus they really clamp tight and that's what I need, something tight. So if she walks through and kind of bumps it, it doesn't fall off. So I thought I'd give you an update on what's going on in the wildlife. Now keep in mind, we do not live out in the middle of the country. We live in the city. But this city's got a mountain, it's got a little bit of free space. And being that our wildlife, our nature is being pushed, not all of it, but a lot of them going back into whatever land they can find, they found this hillside. And with all the massive homes being built up there and all around, they still have free space. My neighbor's got a lot of free space and we've got free space and we allow them to come in. Now there's certain critters these days that have moved out of the hillsides and gone into the city, such as raccoons. Raccoons go through trash, they go through people's properties, and plus up here we have a lot of coyotes. So they've kind of moved out. But as far as the deer, from what I understand in the hills here, there's somewhere between, I've heard the numbers kind of up and down. I'm gonna say between 36 and 50 deer in the area. This is not just ours, it goes through all the hills that are connected, they can roam through. But what's happened this year that has not happened before is they seem to have parked themselves here. Now, going through a weather change that we're going through, we now have, of course, our ponds. We've got three ponds and I will admit, I have left a massive steel bowl of water so that can be flushed and cleaned every day, stainless steel. And of course, I've got the garden and with the drought going on, well, they found paradise. I could be angry and upset. I know a lot of you back east are dealing with deer and you do not like your deer, but here's the thing, as a child, if I had this in my backyard, living in the middle of Los Angeles, I would be in seventh heaven. I would be just so happy. I would go outside as a little kid and just watch the birds and break up bread and feed the birds and look to see if I could find the lizard, which was so rare. This to me, being a city girl, is still so exciting to me. I will work with them as long as I can. And I think we're gonna do okay. I made the meadow, which I saw them in at night as well, and they're nibbling around there. They come through and they have done some damage to the garden, but right now, with all the different gardens I've set up, you know what, with the drought this year, knowing how they cannot find enough food, let them eat their heart out as long as they don't touch what I don't want them to touch. So I will let them have the tomato plant and they better leave my watermelon alone. That's what I'm waiting for is my watermelon. And they forage, they go through and they eat a little here, a little there. It's not like they come through like a goat and just eat everything. They actually go through and nibble on trees and nibble on the brush and nibble on grass and weeds, whatever they can find. So let them nibble. I'll keep an eye out and if I have to come out in the middle of the night again and shush them off, I will. Or I can get on my speaker and say go, but I'll be honest, I tried that, they didn't go. So I had to come out and shush them on. So with that, I thought I'd share that with you. That was a, I thought it just a little fun thing. And I think it's fine. I have enough food for Gary and I, and we still share and share with our neighbors and family and friends. And if we've got to share with wildlife, well, why not? We're in a special place. We're still in the city, but just a little bit on the outskirts to give us a little bit of nature. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. All right, I can afford a few tomatoes. You know what? I better grab some before they come back. They are so good. Mmm. Oh my gosh. They're sweet like sugar. No wonder they picked this plant. I don't blame them.